Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. It's Pride Month. Lately, I've had to readjust some of my own thinking. There are 1.4 million gender minority individuals in the United States of America. Gender minority or non-binary and gender queer people who do not identify within the gender binary system, male versus female. While sex usually gets associated with gender, at times an individual doesn't identify with the gender associated with their sex assigned at birth. They may or may not choose to receive hormones or have gender affirming procedures. Sexual orientation, however, is different. It's how an individual characterizes their sexual attraction. Sensitivity regarding gender identity and sexual orientation is essential for patient care. These populations are marginalized and at risk for stigma and negative health outcomes. Non-binary and gender queer people report worse well-being in comparison to binary trans respondents. Both groups report worse well-being when compared to cisgender individuals, but why? Trans and NBGQ inform society that there are societal stressors that play a role. Bullying, discrimination, and victimization play a role. Look, as a cisgender heterosexual black male, I've experienced my fair share of discrimination or racism growing up. It happens, and to be honest, I tend to just accept it. Keep taking steps forward, but when it comes to access to medical care, discrimination can be deadly. It's my job to understand this, and as such, I need to continue to health screen for certain conditions if certain organs are present. I also have to apply this to the most common disease I see, asthma along with other lung diseases. If we look at asthma, let's think about sex. Sex assigned at birth is the major determinant of lung size. Spirometry readings are binary and can lead to significant misinterpretation and can lead to management changes. You may not qualify for obstructive lung disease, but need that qualification to get insurance to cover your inhaler. If we do not select the biological characteristics at birth correctly, you can see how this could be problematic. Also, individuals may begin to take gender-affirming hormones, which may have an effect on lung volumes and risk of certain infections and other conditions as well. We have to perform more research and understand these aspects of healthcare to better care for gender minority individuals, especially in pulmonology with studies showing increased smoking tobacco and three times likelihood of e-cigarette use and marijuana use in gender minorities. Here's another stat that's interesting, and this is taken from Medicare data. 29.6% of transgender beneficiaries have asthma compared to 13.6% of cisgender individuals. The prevalence of asthma in cisgender women, 10%, is higher when compared to cisgender men, 6%. Hormones likely play a role here. Looking at obese cisgender females with elevated testosterone and estradiol levels, they have a decreased risk of asthma. However, hormone replacement therapy increases the risk of asthma. COPD rates are higher in transgender Medicare beneficiaries as well. Transgender people of color have greater odds of having asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia when compared to their white counterparts. There may be a link between experience of racism or other stressors and physical health conditions like asthma or other autoimmune disorders. The most common diagnosed cancer in the gender minorities? Yeah, you guessed it, it's lung cancer. Only 2.3% of gender minorities get their screening, which is a low dose CT scan while 17.2% of cisgender individuals attain this test. Both of these numbers are really low, but screening is truly all we have to prevent the advancement of lung cancer. We know that hormone use can lead to blood clots, so we do need to understand if individuals are taking gender-affirming hormone therapy to assess that VTE risk or the thromboembolism risk. So what are the solutions? Well, the first thing is for everyone to open their mind. In my office, I would like to include a more gender-inclusive intake form that includes sex assigned at birth, preferred pronouns, and sexual orientation. This helps me assess risk and understand what conditions I need to screen for. I'm gonna do my part to help people in general, but we must understand that disease is science, but our biology is significantly affected by what surrounds us. Not just what we breathe and what we touch, but what we hear and what we see. Let's be nice, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining this episode of Medicine Deconstructed.